Jared over there said, it's his birthday and he's wanting to sing. You got a song you're going to sing right now? Just put $20 in, we'll let it slide. What you do on your birthday. All right, let's get our Bibles open to Psalm 126. Psalm 126. Amen. We were singing that prayer meeting the other night, just cutting up. And uh, I'm glad they made a way one day for me, and he will make a way for you also. Uh, Psalm 126. This morning, I'd like to take this opportunity to challenge you to bring people to church this coming weekend. The opportunity that we have this weekend is like so rare. I, I can't tell you. There's probably, not, there's probably not 10 other opportunities this good in the country in a year's time to bring people to church and get them under the sound of the gospel than this weekend. I'm not saying that because it's us. I'm saying that because I know what's going on in the church world. I don't know of anything any better than having your kids, your friends and family in those services Friday night and then Saturday night especially. If you got a birthday party, leave early. If you got a, uh, if, if, if something else, get it done. Make that Saturday night service. That's the big night. I'll be preaching the message on the subject. The half has never been told. You'll be one of the most unusual messages I've ever preached. And it's important. You say, well, if it's grandma's, it, it is more important than grandma's birthday. If it's my grandma's birthday, I'd take her a card and come on to church that night. I would. And I've done it. I've done it. And if, but if you've done got your mind made up, I'm not coming. You've been tricked by the devil, friend. Uh, get it in. Get in here. Get in here, and don't miss it. Bring your friends that night, Saturday night. There will be food. If you are also willing to help, we still need some help with food. Anybody here who hadn't been in any of these meetings that will help serve hamburgers, hot dogs, clean up, or help in any way, soon as service is over this morning, you go over and see Miss Karen. Raise your hand over real high, Miss Karen. But there she is, right there. Please tell her, give her your name, your phone number, and she'll put you on the list. From 12 to 2 will be food, and, and that's when they'll have the boxing, basketball, volleyball. We're going to have a volleyball court set up in the, the, the big barn building. So they'll have a special volleyball games Tuesday or Saturday afternoon. And then the preaching starts at 2 o'clock, one right after another. Supper's at 5, and the big service at 6. That's this coming Friday and sa or Saturday. And then Friday night, of course, Barry Spears. I, I, I read this, and I thought I'd pass it on to you. And this is not, it don't include churches like us, but it's church as in general across America. What was responsible for you coming to church? 2% I had a special need. 3% I just happened to come. 6% I liked the preacher. That would be down to 1% here. 1% I visited there. 5% I liked the Sunday school. One half percent I came to revival services. 3% I liked the program. 79% a friend or a relative invited me. That is by far the greatest and most effective way to get people in church is people who go to church, work with somebody, hey, why don't you go to church with me Friday night, Saturday night? That's the most effective way there is. Now look at Psalm 126, and we'll begin reading with verse number 1. It said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Here's what I want to get to. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I want to preach just a very short few minutes this morning. On the subject, the greatest work in the world. 
The greatest work, more than kings, more than pontiffs and potentates, more than presidents and senators and congressmen, more than sheriffs and governors and policemen and rulers of this world. The most important work in the world is the bringing of another person to the Lord Jesus Christ and to get them saved. Now listen to me, people. If what this Bible says about hell fire is true, and I think I heard, I think I heard Brother Derek, somebody mentioned a while ago about, uh, or somebody mentioned this morning about what the what Jesus said about hell is what we'll take. I think it's a preacher I was listening to this morning, and we don't we know Jesus don't lie. So when I say if, you know, I don't I don't I'm saying it because I doubt it. I'm saying if we believe what this Bible says about hell fire, there is nothing, there is nothing more important that me or you could ever do or say than keeping somebody else out of that hell. There is nothing. You could invent a cure for cancer, and that'd be great, but it, it, that cancer don't last forever. Cancer don't last forever. You could solve all the world's problems and bring world peace. That would be wonderful. But still, everybody got to die anyway. And if it's hell forever, you've not really accomplished much. So to, this morning, I want to challenge you to think about this scripture and think about this thing. This week is very special to me in that uh, it's not just Youth Rally Week, but it's also my spiritual birthday and my anniversary of getting saved will be this Thursday, Kerrigan's birthday. She got, uh, she got saved on my spiritual birthday. I know that I look older than her, but really we have, we have the same birthday. And uh, 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 the 18th, 19th, those, and, and also my sister Debbie has a birthday. And she looks, Shana, she's only 32, but she, I remember, I got saved, it's on her birthday. She claims it's another day, uh, but uh, I remember it well. And anyway, uh, my, my spiritual birthday is coming up. I will never forget, y'all, I will never forget when I was 18 years old, my Uncle Jack run that store there in Nebo, my mom's brother Jack, his daughter Jackie worked in that store. I went in that store that day, and I was lost. Y'all know my testimony? You've heard it a hundred times. I, I played that rock band when I was a teenager. Thank the Lord, I quit that, started playing basketball. Got in trouble playing basketball, not near as bad as I would have that rock band. And I was lost. And I remember feeling empty. I remember feeling like something's missing. I remember, I'm not just making this up. I remember... Uh, I, we played ball swings. I said, I, got, I mean, I mean, you can only play so much, so much. You can only have so much fun. You can only eat so much steak and ice cream. I had a, little, I had a motorcycle. I had a little uh, convertible car. And, we'd ride, and I remember thinking, I remember thinking, I remember thinking, is this it? Is this life? And I was 18. I was under conviction and didn't even realize it. God was dealing with me. I went in that store, as we did every day, and my cousin said, Danny, I wish you boys would come to our revival we're having. And, and I remember thinking, yeah, hey, yeah, okay, well, yeah, whatever, Jay. And it, it just run, run like water running off a duck's back. It didn't phase me a bit. I mean, I, it hit me a little bit, but I didn't take it serious. And then um, it, it came. Joe Parson, the old man of God that preached that revival. I've got his picture in there in my office uh, that, that DJ had made for me. And, I, I look at it. I looked at it a while ago. And that man came to Nebo. That man had been praying. People had been fasting. Like we have this day and this week. And I remember, I remember thinking something, something empty on the inside. Now let me just stop and say this right now. Do you realize how many people there are out here in Burke County today walking around feeling like that? Like there's, there's got to be something more? That there's an emptiness in the side. You can only get so high. You can only get so drunk. You can only commit so much sin. And then you sober, have to pay for it and do it all over again. And they're searching. People are searching, y'all. Some of them don't even realize what they're looking for. But people are looking for something. People are looking for something to make them happy. And fame and fortune. He, he talked about O.J. Simpson. Uh, O.J. Simpson. Life, and, and, and he's right. We can't judge his standing before God. Hope he got saved. Hope he did. God can do it, and the Lord would, just like that, if he called on him. But what a tragic life. What a pitiful flop 
and failure in life. And deep down inside, all them athletes, all those movie stars, all they're people just like us. And deep down inside, they're looking for something. They're looking for something like, this will make me happy. I'll tell you, that'll make me happy. I'll tell you, that'll make me happy. And I remember my cousin, uh, or, or, or somebody told me, the revival started, I think it's on Sunday morning, and it was on Monday, somebody told me, they said, Kenneth, Kenneth Carter, boy played ball with us every day, said, Kenneth got saved last night. I said, what? And I didn't even know what getting saved really meant, but it was like somewhere, like a knife stuck in me. I said, oh my goodness, that's a close friend. I'm telling you, there ain't nothing, there is nothing in the world that'll get a hold of a person anymore than hearing one of your friends got saved and went to church. And I'm telling you, it put a hunger in my heart. And I told my cousin, I said, y'all want to go? We'll go up there. All the kids from school was going. I just graduated, of course. And and uh, I, I went. That, we went that first night, and me and him looked in the back door. That place was packed. There was a group from Appalachian State. There was a Christian group back then. Went around singing at churches, and they were they were they're a little. They wasn't doctrinally right, but they had got saved and they loved the Lord. All that hippie stuff was going on back in those days, and uh, uh, they 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 had got right with God. And really, some of them really did get saved. And I remember we looked in the back door of that church. And it was full and people were singing. And I said, I ain't going in there. I said, if I walk in there right now, everybody's going to turn around and stare at me. My hair was down to here. I, I, I said, I ain't going. And I, that was the devil that uh, cheated me out of that night. And uh, so the next night, we went back. We went back, walked in there and sat down. There was people sitting all around me like this. And I remember we sat there in that service. There was a group got up, that group, and started singing. Just like that little song we sung, stuff like that. Gee, he made a way for me. He made a way for me. Next thing I know, everybody in there was crying, and people was going to the altar right and left. As far as I can remember, I had never been in a service where it got like that. I remember mom and them singing back in the old days, me laying in a pew, and I had the preacher get real red in the face and scream. I remember that, but I'd never been in a service where people were just flooding the altar like that. And I thought, oh, my. And for some reason, everybody was standing up. And this girl went to school with standing in front of me. She turned around and said, Danny, why don't you get saved? I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was trapped. I said, uh, I, I, I ain't my time. I didn't know what to tell her. I, I didn't, I didn't, and, then I, and, and, and my cousin standing right here beside me, Mike, he turned around and he said, hey, man, let's go get saved. And I said, I, I ain't ready. I'm not ready. And here went one. Here went another. Here went another one. And I remember all that stuff my mom told me. Growing up, come back to my to my heart. That's why I tell you, you mamas, don't ever think you're wasting your time putting the Word of God and the truth of God in these kids' heart. It'll never get away from them. It'll never get away from them. And I remember my mom telling me, it, uh, their hell's an awful, awful place. And I remember thinking, I don't want to go to hell. And the devil got, you know how the old, how it does in the, in the, uh, and the skits and stuff. The devil's on one side and the angel's on the other. And, and the devil said, if you go up there, people will laugh at you. And the angel said, it ain't going to matter when you're in hell screaming. And, and the devil said, uh, how, you can't live right. And the, and the angel said, yeah, you, you can through the help of the Lord. And the devil, it was back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And all of a sudden, I can't explain it. I, I've looked back on it a million times. I'll celebrate it this week. And I'll never forget, it's just like something just went, boom. I said, let's go. I pushed him, and he went, and I went, and and there were so many people in the altar. I was right here, and I laid down the floor right here, my face in that carpet, and I bawled my eyes out. I had never cried in front of them people. I, I mean, I mean, we just went to the state playoffs a few months before that, my high school team, and everybody in town knew me, and I was in the newspapers and, and all of that, you know, and I went up there. So I played with a couple of little colleges up in Montreal and places like that. And I remember, and I, 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 I broke, buddy. I broke. It, it broke me. The Holy Ghost conviction. And I stood up that night and I was wiping my eyes. It didn't take the Lord 30 minutes to save me, but it took me 30 minutes to puke all that sin out, I reckon. I mean, I just, I just sold it all out and I said, God, this is it. Oh, God, help me. And I stood up and I sat down right here, right here. These three old women right here. No, no, uh, I, I sat down right here. I don't remember anybody else. I sat down like this. And that old man of God got up. He looked like he was 100. He was probably about 50. And he looked down at me. He said, 
you get everything straight, son? I said, yes, sir. I went home that night. You've heard my testimony. I wouldn't plan on saying it. I'll never forget. I told mom. Mom was in the house just a wiping. She went with a dish rag in her hand all the time. My mom, my mom wiped for germs when there wasn't no germs. There could be no germs. She'd still uh, invent some germs to wipe off uh, and, and sprayed everything with Clorox and everything else. She was, she was wiping and wiping. And I walked in the house and I said, Mom, guess where I've been? She said, well, I said, church. She said, well, I'm glad, son. I'm so proud of you. And something inside me said, tell her. And I looked down like, who is that? And I said, somebody's in me. Somebody's in me. And it was the Lord. The Holy Spirit had moved in. Yeah. And i never forget. I, I said, Mom, I got saved. She's the per first person I told that. She throw that rag down, hugged my neck. I, went in, I laid down that night. I laid down the bed. And I said, whoa, what about this? I, I, that, that, oh, the girl that I took that night to the, to the, uh, to the revival, uh, I took her home. My cousin, we all rode together. And I took her home. And you ain't going to believe this? Uh, before I had that little MG. had a gear shift about that, about that long. Where you go, first gear, second gear, you, you can change it with your wrist. Them little cars like that. And I thought, uh, and before she got out, I said, "You don't pray." Boy, something did happen to you, didn't it? I, I mean, I was eighteen, brother. Take my girlfriend home and say, oh, "You don't pray before we get out." And I put my head—I never done this before in my life. I put my head on that little gear shift, and I don't know what I said, but I said, "I." Am. And I'm telling you, buddy, I'm, I'm telling you, people, something happened to me. Something happened to me. That same thing can happen. How many more little Danny Castles are out there running around? Up and down these streets and up and down these roads. Might be your nephew this time. Buddy, I'm telling you, when I get to heaven, I'm going to find my cousin Jackie. And I'm going to... I'm going to hug her neck and I'm going to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That old book said if you'll bear precious seed, put the word of God out, you can do it. And you can get somebody to church this weekend. She didn't have a theological degree. She's a Methodist. She didn't, I mean, she went to a Baptist church at that time. I think, but she didn't know the Bible. She didn't know how to witness. She didn't know nothing. She said, Danny, I wish you'd come to our revival. That's it. I'm telling you this this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I challenge everybody here. You know the story. I rode a motorcycle to work the next morning and got fired. Next morning, plant manager comes to see me and this other boy sitting there and fired us both. That was not an accident. I went home. I'd been working about an hour. Went home, got in the house. My Uncle Ralph come by. I heard him in the kitchen. He said, I just thought I'd come by and tell you I'm glad to hear about Danny. I thought, how in the world? He, it's all over town. It's on Nebo right now. Nebo, everybody, you know, you know, everybody knows everybody. And, uh, and I, said, uh, I said, my Lord, it's good. And I remember thinking, I'm not going to hell. I'm not going to hell. For the first time in my life, the peace of God had come into my heart and into my life. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, you can do it. Now look, now look, y'all. The Bible, Jesus said, come after me and I will make you to become what? Fishers of men. Fishers of men. That's not an accident. I'm not a great fisherman. I don't care a thing about fishing. You can take every fishing boat and every fishing pole in the world and, and vanish it and it wouldn't bother me one bit. I'm not against it. If you enjoy fishing, wonderful. You catch them, clean them, and I'll eat them. Uh, but I don't care nothing about fishing. I just don't. I, I just don't know what anybody gets about just doing this. Uh, and, and, and maybe it get, it's exciting when you catch one. I know I used to fish when I was little, but I just don't care nothing about fishing. If you do, I'm not against it. Great. Wonderful. I have, and it's a great, great pastime. And I know people that fish professionally. But you know what? I don't even remember the last time I caught a fish. If you, if you held a gun on me right now and said, Danny, I'm going to blow your brains out if you don't tell me the last time you caught a fish, you just have to do it. I don't know. And my answer is simple. I ain't been fishing. I, you can't catch a fish if you don't go fishing. Look, you don't just drive down a road and a fish jump out of the water and jump in your truck and get on your hook. I know they're dumb, but they ain't that dumb. You, you will never catch a fish if you don't go fishing. 
Now, if I ask some of you here this morning, when the last time you got somebody saved, brought somebody to church, you don't even remember. And the reason why is you're just not fishing. Jesus said, if you follow me, I'll make you to become fishers of men, which indicates if you ain't fishing, you ain't following. Oh, I know you live a holy life. Oh, I know you don't drink, cuss, smoke, chew, or fool with them that do. I know you don't go to parties and watch dirty movies. Oh, I know all of that. But uh, that's just stuff, that's the negative. That's stuff you don't do. There's a lot in the Christian life that you're supposed to do. Now, fish. You got to fish. And I don't care how sorry a fisherman you are. I don't care how bad a fisherman you are. You can take a straight pin and bend it and make a, a, a hook out of it and put a little piece of bread in there and throw it in there. You throw it in there enough. You are going to catch a fish. You hear me? You are going to catch a fish. Now, you take enough of these things right here, enough of these tracks, enough of these things, and you keep putting it out there, putting it out there, you're going to catch somebody. You're going to get somebody in. You're going to get somebody. There ain't no everybody in here this morning. I challenge everybody in here. And, and the, the problem is that 90% of you people sit here and listen to this, and you say, yeah, that's right, that's good, for and have no intention of doing it. And that's your problem. The Bible said we're not just to be hearers of the word, but what? Doers of the word of God. You've got a nephew. You've got a, a son. You've got a daughter. You've got a brother-in-law. You've got a, a neighbor. You've got some kids. If you went to work this week and went fishing, you would catch a fish. Amen? Uh, a young boy came to one of Gypsy Smith, the great evangelist revival years ago. And this young boy got saved. And he got saved and he said, I see it now. I see it now. He said, we give ourselves to Jesus, and then we leave ourselves there and go get somebody else and bring them. The next night, he brought his mother. Brought his mother. She got saved. The next night, he brought his grandmother, and she got saved. And what that boy was doing was fishing. He was fishing. Years ago, somebody called me in Marion, and they said, Brother Danny, uh, can you go visit somebody? I said, I, I, sure, I'd be glad to. And by the time somebody asked me to visit somebody, I mean, my goodness, I'm a preacher. I, I said, yes, I will. Who are they? Where are they? She told me this person's name. She says her cousin or something. And she said, well, tell me where they live. She said, I believe this lady is under conviction. I believe you could witness to her. And I said, okay. So me and somebody went over there one night. I knocked on the door. This lady, probably in her 40s, come to the door. And I said, hey, how you doing, ma'am? I'm Danny Castle. She said, I know who you are. I said, can I, we come talk to you? She said, come on in. We went down and said, her name was Patsy. Don't remember her last name? I just remember her name was Patsy. 40 years ago. We went there and sat down. And that woman was honestly shaken. I said, Patsy, you need to get right with the Lord. She said, yeah. She said, yeah. And you know what she told me? She said, this has been bothering me so bad. She said, I don't even go by your church. She said, anytime I have to go to town, I'll go around the block and go around the block, keep them going past that church. She said, every time I go by there, it's just like some. And man, I was sitting there about to shout. When she was telling me, I know who that was. That was the Lord in there saying, get in here, get in here, get in here. Now, look, it's been all these many years later, and there ain't no doubt in my mind, there's probably 500 people seeing them signs all over town, and the Lord saying, you need to get in that. You need to get in that. You need to get in that. And mine and your job is to find them. Throw the bait, the word of God, find them, and get them. By the way, Patsy did get saved, and, and she 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 had, uh, lived for the Lord. I, I don't know whatever happened to her, but she did get saved by the grace of God. You know why? Because we went, throwed the hook in, and reeled her in. Jesus said, come after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. This drug business is absolutely destroying our country, people. It's absolutely destroying our country. I seen boys the other night at the dollar store, and they were just, just like, I didn't even know they was in the world. And the woman was fussing at them, and they didn't like but 60-something cents paying for their little Debbie cakes. And I gave them a dollar and helped them pay for it. And, and, and they, they were mad, and she was mad, and, and, and it was just awful. It was awful. It was awful. Drugs are destroying our nation right up under us. And I tell you something this morning, we got something at the youth rally better than drugs. We got something better than any high that you could ever have, better than any anything you could ever feel or ever experience. 
and there's no after effects and no hangover and you don't have to worry about getting busted or call the law. You can lay down on your pillow at night and say everything's all right. Jesus made a way for me. We've got the truth, people, and that's exactly what people need. Said a man one time was was uh, was Christian, and this man said he 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 uh, he got backslid, and he said, "I just don't care if I live or die. I don't care if I do anything for God or not. Who cares?" Well, that night he went to sleep and had a dream, and he dreamed he did die, and he went to heaven, and he said an angel was showing him around. Angel was showing him around heaven. And the angel said, Hey, come here, I want to show you something. And they looked over the battlements of heaven and looked down on earth. He said, See, right down there is where you used to live. He said, Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm down. And he said, Look at it from up here. And he looked at it and he said, All he saw was all his family and friends and the people of his community with blindfolds on like that. And they were just walking, falling off in a big hole. And they were all walking and falling off in a big hole. He said, oh my goodness. Is that the way it is? And the angel said, yes. That's your community. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you want to stay here and enjoy heaven? Or do you want to go back down there and work a while? He said, send me back down there. I want to go to work. And he came back and he said, I'm going to heaven. I'll be here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Send me back down. Let me work a while. I, me and Frankie, we had a Got a, a ants answer out. Y'all notice that, right? Lord, them ten trillion Katie dids are coming in a few weeks. And they're gonna eat all your hair off your head. If you go out in the yard. But uh ten a trillion Katie dids are coming. Seventeen year and a thirty year. First time since eighteen hundred did both come together or something like that. And and these ants are out there and there's on a basketball court. And I don't want to torture nobody, but you ain't going to do this on the court. So I took my foot and went, whoop. And there had to be 10, they little bitty, bitty tiny things. They just run, 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 crazy like that. And Frankie went. I said, now don't put your foot in there. They'll bite you. And, and, I, and he was looking down and I thought, that's how, that's how when they're in heaven, they look down on us. That's us. That's us down here. People just running everywhere, going this way, going that way, going that way. Meanless, meaningless life. Going nowhere, going around, around in circles, ladies and gentlemen. I remember thinking that, and that guy said, "Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back." Now, look, people, it don't work like that. God don't take you to heaven and let you come back. Once we're there, we're there. So, but now we got our chance. We got a chance. If Jesus don't come this week, if the Lord don't come this week, and and the and the weather and nothing don't blow up or something terrible happened, if none of that, barring any weird something happening, we have the opportunity of a lifetime to let the light of the gospel. Listen, the world's never been darker. Politics has never been worse. Uh, the Hollywood's never got more evil and satanic. The world's in darkness out there. Thank God, shining light, Baptist church, we've got something that the whole world needs and the whole world looks forward to and the whole world is hungry for Let's get it to them this week. Get them there. Get them there. One time, we uh, had visitation. This, I preached people go visit, and this lady, she's actually an important lady in church, Sunday school teacher and everything. She went visiting, and somebody slammed the door in her face, and she got mad and said, I ain't never going back again. And I thought, that is our generation. I so said, I don't feel comfortable just randomly witnessing. I, I doubt if Paul felt comfortable in that jail with him striped blood running out of it. He probably didn't feel comfortable. I doubt if Stephen felt comfortable when they was throwing rocks at him and busting his brains out. See, what a wimpy bunch we are. We don't feel comfortable. Somebody might hurt our feelings. I'm telling you this morning, I challenge every person in here today. I challenge every person in here today. Fill your car up. The Bible said they'll doubtless come again rejoicing and bringing the sheaves with them. I think this morning preachers that's come out of our ministry uh, from New Manor and here and I think of Sam Bellini, my cousin. He's preaching right now down in Taylorsville. The soul just like I am. I think of Brother Gene over at Liberty preaching right now. Soul just like I am. 
I think of Rick Davis down there in Troutman preaching just like I am this morning. I think of Rick Parker down in South Carolina preaching just like I am this morning. I think of Steve Durham up in Marion preaching to his congress. I think of Paul Jant in the jail ministry, with thousands of people who got saved just because of what we're doing like here this morning. I think of uh, Nathan and Teresa in Bulgaria this morning witnessing to literally tens of thousands of people because of what happened in a service just like this this morning. I'm telling you people, we got a chance. We got a chance. If you get sick, get healed really quick. If your husband and wife have a fight, drive separate cars and come on. You'll kill each other. Seriously. Seriously. Don't realize that's the devil. It's the devil trying to trick me out of youth rally. Seriously. I'm not joking. I told him the other night, my, my truck ran off in the pond on the day of the youth rally on Saturday. I let them boys take it camping. They left it up on the hill. I live on a big hill down at the bottom of the and they left it in neutral. It didn't happen all night. Didn't happen all morning. I was up in the woods praying for the Saturday night, big night. Somebody hollered, Brother Daddy, your truck's in the pond. What do you think happened there? How'd that happen? There wasn't nobody even around it. The devil just goes, Whoop. and that thing rolled down my hill, across the yard, and out in the pond. Water up to here. You say, well, Brother Danny, you probably didn't go that night, did you? If you thought that about me, I'd ask God to forgive me. You know me better than that. If the pond fell in the house, I'd go to youth rally. It might my air conditioning tore up right now, Ronnie. Uh, I, I need a little help. <laughs> I, I, not this week. Well, it's over. Listen, y'all, it don't matter. It don't, the devil's going to try a little stuff like that. Either our water pump will go out or something will go wrong with the car. Something will happen every time. I waited out there in that water. It was a little Toyota, old 86 Toyota truck. And I opened the door and I got in it. Water was up to the windows nearly. And I started it. It started. And it went blub, 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 bubbles coming out like that. And I put it in four wheel drive. I told him Wednesday night. I put it in four wheel drive and gave it to gas and it just went straight down. Just digging. <laughs> I said, it ain't going to get out like this. So I called a boy from Marion while I was about to cry. Begging God to bless the service that night, and he put a cable to it and pulled it out. And I left it set, and the life of the youth rally is over. And somehow or another, it got all right. I thought it ruined it, but it didn't. And I'm just saying, don't you think he ain't going to try something to stop you from getting your family here? You got kids? Get them here. You got neighbors? Get them here. Be a part of it. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed, never eye closed. Nobody's talking. Every head bowed, never eye closed. Nobody's moving. Every head bowed, never eye closed. Nobody's moving, please. God may be dealing with your heart here today. Maybe you're here this morning and you've got out of church. And you say, Brother Danny, that sounds so exciting. I want to get back in there for the youth rally. Miss Desi, come on, play something right quickly and we're going to go. We're not going to have invitation like we usually do. If you're here this morning and you've never been saved, you're not sure you're saved, it'd be a good time to get saved. She's playing softly. If you're here this morning and you're a Christian and your husband's not saved or your wife or your son or daughter, but Danny, I wish you'd call them. Right? I will, I will. Let me know. Let me know. We'll call them and buy them. Visit. If, if I have time, we'll do what we can. Somebody will. Let's do it. This is the biggest week of the year, y'all. Let's get this done. If you want to come and join me on the altar? Come on, let's pray. And then we'll meet back tonight and have our final service before we move. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that you'd do what needs to be done in every heart and every life. Dear God, I pray that you'd bless our youth rally. I pray that everybody here will take this challenge this morning, Lord, and, and bring the whole car full of people. Have your way, Lord, in our lives. We love you. We pray the Holy Spirit would come and use us for thy glory. I pray, God, that you'd move in every heart and every life. I pray you'd save souls. I pray you'd bless Brother Barry Spears. Put the power of God on him, Lord. Put it on him, Lord, I pray. Lord God, put it on him like never before. I pray for uh, the service this Saturday evening. You bless all the preaching. 
And then the big night, Saturday night, I pray that somehow you'd get in that message, Lord. And God, do what you've done for me many, 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 many years ago. Have you in our lives. We love you. God, fill us with the Holy Spirit of God. Help us to reach people. Do what ought to be done in our life. God, I pray once again for the weather, for the travel, for the activities. Everybody be safe. And give us a mighty, mighty movement of your spirit. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. And for his sake we do pray. Amen. 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 All right. So I'm still praying tonight, uh, this morning. Men, you want to bring your trucks tonight, if you can. Need some trucks. I think some bring trailers. But we'll have regular church. You don't have to help tonight if you don't want to. You can go home. Uh, 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 six o'clock this evening. Six o'clock this evening. Be here. Six o'clock this evening. I got a special message on my heart. And then we're going to load up. We are at that building. We'll seat a thousand. And we got chairs coming. Brother Randy's got a truckload. We got about 400 out there. There's about 300 over there. And so tomorrow evening at 5.30, ladies, you're going to bring buckets, uh, uh, put something in soap and, and sponge or something, going to clean chairs. And uh, John will be there. We'll be lining them up. Uh, Andy will be there working or putting up the decorations. And uh, this is it. Okay, here we go. All right, don't miss tonight's service. Uh, now I want you to write down on a piece of paper uh, before you leave here this morning, write down, I'm going to invite so-and-so. I'm going to invite the devil will make you forget about it. And let's get them here, okay? All right, let's all bow our heads and hearts. This morning, Mr. Fletcher, dismiss us in prayer.